In this video, we're going through 10 different drone movements that I use all the time. Over the last couple weeks, I've been flying a ton of, and just getting a lot of different footage. And a few days ago, I got LASIK. So now I'm just sitting in my office can't really go out and do anything for a little while. I gotta keep my eyes safe while they're recovering. But as I'm going through all my footage, what I found is that I do like the same thing over and over when I'm in a new scene. I capture the same type of movements. So in this video, I wanted to go through what some of those movements are and some of the things that I always do when I take off and start flying so that I can get a range of shots that I can use in the edit. So the first one is the orbit. Now this shot is like my default go-to. I'll take the drone up and I'll always go for an orbit. Whether I'm using the active track that's built into some of the DJI drones or I'm doing it manually, this is a shot that I feel like I always grab first. Now to do this manually, you're gonna either push left or right on the right joystick and then you're gonna use your left joystick and point it the opposite direction so that you arc around your subject. And basically the orbit is just circling a full circle around whatever it is that you're filming, whether it's a subject or a place, you're basically creating the arc motion so it's a full circle, an orbit. Now I default to this because it just looks really good from a drone's perspective. You get a ton of parallax with the front elements moving at a different pace than the back elements and it just has this really dynamic look. I'll either shoot this super slow and I'll put it into cine mode or I'll put it into sport mode and go as fast as possible so you really see that movement in the background. The second shot is the top down shot. This is all about getting above whatever it is that you're filming and looking straight down. There's really no specific movement that looks best with this shot. You're just gonna have to play around with it, but essentially you fly the drone up high and you point the gimbal straight down. And when your gimbal is pointed straight down, I like to add motion into the shot. So either it's a push forward, pull back, left to right movement, or I also like to just spin. And when I do this movement, I put it into cine mode. So I'll put it in the slower setting so you get a more subtle cinematic looking shot rather than a super fast top down. Now with this shot, I would play around with how the camera moves with your subject. Whether your subject's entering frame or you're following your subject and keeping them centered, play around with that top down shot because really drones are the only camera that can get that shot and it always gives you that unique perspective, so I always like to add that in when I'm out shooting. Now the third shot is simple, raise up, drop down. Like a crane, you're just going straight up or straight down. Now I love this shot because you go from ground elements to the sky, or from the sky down to ground elements, and you see a lot of movement in that action because of all the foregrounded elements. A lot of times this is a great way to reveal the place that you're in, so you're starting small, and then you go up into the sky and all of a sudden you see all of the surrounding elements. Now to do this movement, you use the left joystick and you just point straight up or straight down. And I use shoot this one in either the semi or the normal setting so that it's a little bit slower. Now the next one is a dolly left or dolly right. So this is just a moving to the side. Like you're just pointing straight out at your scene, your subject, whatever it is, and you're just moving left or right. Now to do this on the controller, you're just gonna use the right joystick and you're just gonna pull it left or right. With this one, I like to put it in cine mode so it's slow, subtle action. And if I have subjects that I'm filming, I like to have them interacting at a different pace than what I'm moving. Whether it's the opposite direction or it is going in the same direction, but the subjects are moving at a different pace than my drone is moving. A lot of times I default to these slow, subtle movements because I think they just look good when you're editing. Now, there's definitely a time and place for super fast motion, and I'll talk about that with some of the other movements in the series. Now, number five is a dolly shot with a pan. So this is kind of a cross between the last shot we just talked about and the orbit, but I don't wanna do a full orbit. I wanna be able to move left or right with a slight pan. And I use this shot a lot of times just to reveal the scene and make it a little bit more dynamic than just moving in one direction. So it's the same movement pattern as the orbit. However, I'm not centering around something specific. I'm not centering around a single point. Rather, I just wanna show the landscape with this double action motion. Now you can shoot this in cine, normal, or sport mode. It really just depends on how you want this to look. Having two motions working in unison gives the drone movement a more dynamic feel on the landscape. Number six is another simple movement. It's a push forward or a pull back. This is like one of the simplest movements that you can do with a drone, but I think it looks really good and it's a 
something I use every time I fly. Now you could put this in cine, normal or sport mode and on the right joystick, you're just gonna push forward or you're gonna pull it back. And if you put it in sport mode and put it low to the ground, you're gonna get this really fast motion across whatever landscape that you're filming in. And when it comes to using ND filters, you're really gonna see the purpose of using an ND filter on a shot like this, because when you're flying low to the ground and you're moving fast, you're actually gonna be able to see the motion blur. Whereas if you're flying low to the ground and you don't use an ND filter and you're flying in midday, you're gonna have to boost your shutter speed, which is gonna force you to have really crisp and clear images and the landscape will feel very jittery. Whereas if you're filming with an ND filter and you're using the proper shutter speed, double that or your frame rate, you're actually gonna see the motion blur in the landscape and it's gonna just feel a lot more seamless rather than really jittery. Number seven takes this a step further, and it is the forward push with a lift. And this is the same type of movement pattern. You can do this in sport, normal, cine. I think it looks good in all of them. But with this movement, you're either moving forward or backwards and then also lifting up. So on the right joystick, you're gonna be pushing forward or backwards. On the left joystick, you're gonna be pressing upwards. Now, what I like to use this action for is being close to the ground and then taking off like a plane. Number eight is using a direction with a gimbal move. So a lot of these moves, they're just using the drone flying in the sky. But if you add gimbal movement to any action, it makes it look a little bit more dynamic. So something like a push in or pull out with a gimbal rotation up or down, gonna give you a completely different look. This shot, for example, pulling back and tilting up, you get this reveal of the entire landscape that started really close up on the action of the scene. Another way to use this is potentially raise up and then have your gimbal go down or vice versa. So you're staying on some subject and then you're either getting up and above it or you're going down and revealing the scene behind. Now to do these movements, you basically go any direction on your joysticks and then you just need to pair that with a finger pull of the roll wheel on the top of the controller. So for this shot, I'm pointing up on the left joystick while I'm tilting the camera down with the roll wheel. Number nine is pairing three directions together. So this would either be two movements and a gimbal move, or it will be just three actions. So for example, this shot, I'm raising up while I'm moving forward and also rotating to the left. So in my controller on my right side, I'd be pushing forward. On my left side, I'd be pushing to the upper left diagonal. And I would be feathering these motions depending on how I want the shot to feel, whether I want more rotation or less rotation. Here's another example where I'm moving left, panning right while also raising up. And I like to put it in sport mode for these types of shots to really show some fast motion while I'm doing these big arcing sweeps and the drones raising up or lowering. Now you can take this a step further and also add in a gimbal move. Now it starts getting really tough when you're adding multiple motions with a gimbal and it just takes practice. And here's a sample of a shot where I am moving right, panning left, while also raising up and bringing the gimbal down. So the way that I approach this shot is how can I combine different movements to create a more dynamic look in the background versus the foreground? Whether that's adding gimbal motion or adding multiple shots together to create bigger sweeping movements rather than just one directionality left or right, up or down, forward or back, rotate. Now number 10 is one that you can only do if you have a drone that has active track because number 10 is all about using active track and then putting it into sport mode while pushing your drone faster than your subject. So this might be something that you would use with a car scene or someone running, someone mountain biking where there's some action happening through the scene and you're tracking a subject. And when you're tracking that subject, rather than just doing an orbit around them or following them, you're pushing the drone past them and around them in these different directionalities, which causes the drone to move in these ways that's really hard to pull off manually. So this is how I like to think about it. If I have my subject moving through the scene, I wanna lock onto them and push past the subject in a diagonal. So I wanna like cut across the front of the subject or the back of the subject. And what happens is instead of creating a straight arc, because the drone is moving faster than the subject, you're gonna create this multi-directional movement where it will come up and over your subject and then spin around facing the other direction, seeing the horizon the complete opposite direction. The cool thing about using active track on a DJI drone like the Air 2 is that once you're locked onto your subject, 
you can control the drone in any direction, but the camera is always gonna be centered on your subject. You can just push in a directionality and then raise up on the left joystick or bring it down, and then you'll be creating these multi-directional movements that you just can't do manually very easily, and especially with a moving subject. So I'll put this in sport mode, go as fast as possible, and really take advantage of the active track to be able to get these shots that you just don't normally see and that are just really hard to be able to pull off. And I'd love to hear from you. Out of these 10 shots, which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. And is there any shot that I missed that you use all the time when you're out flying? Next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It's more drone movements to give you some different ideas on how to fly your drone and get better looking footage. All right, I will see you over there.